Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai, India. Hello citizens of the internet. In this third and concluding part of my e-lecture on contact at pelvis, I am going to discuss trial of labor for management of mild that is borderline CPD. I request you to watch parts 1 and 2 before watching this part. The link to part 1 which deals with the epidemiology and causes of contracted pelvis and part 2 that discusses the diagnosis of contracted pelvis are given here. Since this topic is asked as an LAQ in exams, I am going to discuss the definition, principles and how to conduct a trial of labor in great details. Trial of labor is defined as a strict policy of non-interference and close observation to see what the forces of labor can achieve in a case of borderline contracted pelvis carried out with everything in readiness to interfere in the interest of the mother and or the child if necessary. In other words, it is carried out at the threshold of an operation theatre. It is a clinical test for the factors that cannot be determined before the start of labor such as efficiency of uterine contractions, moulding of the head and yielding of the pelvis and soft tissues which I have mentioned earlier as the immeasurable factors. To put it differently, one can say that it is the time taken by the obstetrician to decide the mode of delivery in a case of borderline pelvis, vaginal or abdominal that is caesarean section. It is because of this inability on our part to decide the mode of delivery, many consider contracted pelvis as a retrospective diagnosis. The principle of trial of labor is as follows. It is said that good uterine contractions are worth half an inch of true conjugate and add to it the effect of molding of the head and give of the pelvis and the problem of borderline CPD is solved. A successful trial of labor has the following advantages. It decreases the rate of elective caesarean section eliminates unwarranted and injudicious interference in labor and a successful trial practically guarantees the woman's obstetric career. However, if it fails, it has the following disadvantages. If the cervix does not dilate well, one does not know how long to wait, there being no well-defined cutoff point. A partogram may help. As a practical point, one must wait for at least 2 hours after full dilatation of the cervix. If trial of labor fails, then the maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality is higher because the mother may be exhausted and caesarean section may not be done in ideal circumstances. Contraindications to trial of labor are elderly primary gravida, malpresentations, gestational hypertension, heart or pulmonary disease, moderate to severe CPD and previous genuine trial of labor has failed. Prerequisites for trial of labor are young primary gavita, no outlet contraction, vertex anterior position, no other obstetric complications and availability of facilities for continuous fetal monitoring and caesarean section. I will now discuss important points in the conduct of a trial of labor in contracted pelvis. With the patient admitted in a tertiary care hospital, first collect blood for grouping and cross matching, take consent for LSCS, shave abdomen, perineum and back. The patient should be nil by mouth and IV fluids should be started and carefully monitor mother's general condition. Assess the fetal condition by recording fetal heart sounds preferably with an electronic fetal monitor. 
check for meconium staining of lichen at ruptured membranes and for caput the progress of labor can be mapped with a partogram avoid premature rupture of membranes by rest in bed avoiding high enema and minimizing vaginal examinations exclude cord prolapse after rupture of membranes give adequate sedation and analgesics the patient can be left for up to 2 hours in the second stage of labor in the presence of good uterine conditions under close supervision of the mother and the fetus a mid cavity or outlet forceps known as the trial of forceps or vacuum extraction may be applied to end the trial successfully only moderate traction should be applied if there is no satisfactory progress of labor as shown by a partograph or if fetal distress develops or a trial of forceps or vacuum extraction fails then do a lower segment cesarean section a good pointer of adequacy of trial of labor is how long after rupture of membranes did the patient deliver cesarean section is required in about 25 to 30% of cases a trial is considered successful if the baby is born per vaginum spontaneously or using forceps or ventus with the mother and the fetus in good condition on the other hand delivery by cesarean section or delivery of a dead baby spontaneously or by craniotomy is called failure of trial of labor i will now enumerate the complications of contracted pelvis complications during pregnancy are incarcerated retroverted gravid uterus mal presentations pendulous abdomen non engagement of fetal head and pyelonephritis especially in a high assimilation pelvis due to greater compression of the ureter complications during labor are uterine inertia prolonged labor premature rupture of membranes cord prolapse acute intrapartum fetal distress obstructed labor rupture uterus necrotic complications such as genito urinary fistula injury to pelvic joints or nerves from a difficult forceps delivery and postpartum hemorrhage fetal complications are intracranial hemorrhage asphyxia neonatorum depressed fracture of skull pelvic nerve injuries and intraamniotic infection i am going to conclude the three part series on contracted pelvis with the following statement in modern obstetrics the incidence of significant bony dystocia requiring cesarean delivery is so low that it is not important whether cpd is a retrospective or prospective diagnosis instead one can say that today it is a tenuous diagnosis for further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology refer to the following books written by me practical obstetrics and gynecology 5th edition modern obstetrics second edition modern gynecology second edition clinical cases in obstetrics questions and answers second edition clinical cases in gynecology questions and answers second edition and pelvic reconstructive surgery if you have found this video useful and informative please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking here